So we now have formulas for the cost functions. Now let's go ahead and look at graphs of the cost curves. And I'm going to go ahead and start with a case where we have decreasing returns to the variable inputs that start right away. <coughs> so we're going to go ahead here and build a graph that has quantity of output here on the horizontal axis and quantity, sorry, cost or prices here on the vertical axis. And we're going to go ahead and start with our marginal costs being relatively low and they're going to go ahead and increase over time because we have diminishing returns to the variable inputs. At low levels of output, our average fixed cost is really, really high because we're only dividing our fixed cost among one unit of output. When we go to two units of output, then average fixed cost per unit of output is going to fall pretty dramatically here right away because we're dividing our fixed cost between two units of output and so on and so forth. And what's going to happen here is our average fixed cost per unit of output is going to be this sort of hyperbola shape like this. So at first it falls very, very rapidly, and then later it's going to fall more slowly. Now what's going to happen here is we can also think about average variable cost. So average variable cost, all of our variable costs are due to our marginal cost. At first, they're equal. Average variable cost and marginal cost are equal. Then they become the average of all the marginal costs up to that date. So our average variable cost curve is going to look something like this. And we know that average total cost equals average fixed cost plus average variable cost. Because remember, we also knew that total cost equals fixed cost plus variable cost. So we're just going to an average version of that same thing. <coughs> so what's going to happen here is that, say, at two units, we know that average variable costs are about 250 per unit. And at two units, we know that average, excuse me, right up here, average fixed costs per unit are three, six, nine, ten dollars per unit. So our overall average total cost at two units is two dollars, sorry, ten dollars of average fixed cost plus 250 in average variable costs. So our average total cost per unit at quantity equals 2 should be 1250. So right there. Now at that point, average fixed cost and average total costs are almost equal to each other because the fixed costs are very large and the variable costs are pretty low. Later on out here, let's suppose out here, here, average fixed cost per unit are $2, and average variable cost per unit are about a little over $4. So average total cost per unit, we stack average variable cost and average fixed costs and get up to here. So out here, we're going to go ahead and see if our drawing this correctly would come out a little bit differently that over time, as we move to large amounts of the output, the average total costs should converge to the average variable costs. Because once we're producing really large amounts of output, the average fixed cost per unit becomes pretty trivial, and it's the average variable cost per unit that becomes dominant. If I were really drawing this correctly, it should have ended up at the case that the minimum of the average total cost curve is where the average total cost curve and the marginal cost curve intersect. 
And it's sort of a necessary mathematical fact that this is going to be true. And the reason for that is that the average total cost, of course, we're averaging over all of our costs of production. If the marginal incremental cost is less than the average so far, then it's going to drag the average down. If, on the other hand, we have a situation where the marginal incremental cost is greater than the average cost, then it's going to drag the average up. The point where these two cross, we switch from a situation of marginal cost is less than average total cost. So when this is true, when marginal cost is less than average total cost, it's dragging average total cost down. And over here, we go to a situation of marginal cost is greater than average total cost. So marginal cost is dragging average total cost up. Exactly at this point, they're equal. So marginal cost is neither dragging down nor dragging up. So average total cost is at its minimum. So this is actually going to end up being important later on here. I'm going to go ahead now and move on to a slightly more complex example. So cost curves when we have increasing returns at first. So if we have increasing returns to our variable inputs at first, then what's going to happen here is that at first we're becoming more efficient as we increase production. So the marginal cost curve slopes down at first and then it slopes up eventually. And specifically what's going to happen here is this area here where the marginal cost curve is downward sloping is where we're having increasing marginal product and this area over here to the right that looks more normal with an upward sloping marginal cost curve is the area where we have decreasing marginal product. I'm not going to worry as much about the exact relationship between average fixed cost and average variable cost in this graph. What's going to be true though, that's sort of an unfortunate confluence, there's no necessary intersection here between average fixed cost and variable cost. But what is going to be true is that the minimum of the average variable cost curve occurs where MC and AVC, average variable cost, cross. For exactly the same reasons, as the minimum of the average total cost curve occurred at the place where the marginal cost curve and the average total cost curve cross. It should also be the case, and we'll challenge my art skills here, that, again, we have this crossing here between ATC and MC at the minimum of the ATC curve. So we can have this sort of more interesting shape to these cost curves and now I'm going to go ahead and talk about a couple of critical points here. One point here is what is the dollar value of this point where marginal cost and average total cost cross? Well, why is this important? This is what we call the break-even price. So remember, this is going to be the lowest point on the average total cost curve. If price is greater than the minimum of ATC, then we can make a profit. We can sell for more than our average cost. If price is less than the minimum of average total cost, then there's no way we're going to be able to make a profit. Even if we totally minimized our costs, we would still not get a price enough to cover that. So we're going to get a loss. 
and if price equals the minimum of average total cost then we get zero profit now remember this is an economics class so we're talking about economic profit and economic profit includes covering your normal costs of capital because in our conception of economic costs remember that the opportunity cost of capital was part of our cost so zero profit means essentially we're earning a normal rate of profit that compensates us for the fact that we have our capital tied up in this business so that's our break-even price another important price here is this minimum of the average variable cost here and this is what's known as our shutdown price and the reason for that is that in the short run if we have price greater than the minimum of average variable cost well we may not be able to break even but in this case we minimize losses by staying open because we're able to sell for more than our direct cost of goods our, our costs of actually supplying we're not able to cover all of our overhead but at least we're making smaller losses than if we sold nothing at all on the other hand if price is less than the minimum of average variable cost we can't even cover our direct cost of production our cost of goods much less try to cover our overhead fixed costs so if price is less than the minimum of average variable cost we minimize losses by shutting down so that's why this point here at the minimum of the average variable cost is known as our shutdown price